the Isla Girl, and I'm back with another reaction video for you tonight. And tonight, I'm reacting to top 25 places to visit on the British Isles. All right, it's a travel guide, so we're going to get right into this because I'm excited to see. You understand me? Because I'm already in love, so I don't, I don't know if this is going to push me off the edge. <laughs> So guys, come on in, wrap back, put a smile on your face, and enjoy. To all my regular schmegler day one, sweetie pie, sweetie poos, come on in, wrap back, put a smile on your face, enjoy. Please, don't forget to go in the comment section, tell me what you'd like me to react to next, because it will be done. Let's get into this video right now. What's up guys, my name is Ra- It's one of the world's most enchanting lands. Let's start this video off at the Skellig Islands. Located off the coast of Southern Ireland, the Skelligs are a set of two islands that are easily one of the most epic wow. locations on the British Isles. The only way to reach the islands is by boat. We left from the town of Port McGee and it took us about an hour to reach the Great Skellig. We got off the boat and I was just so freaking stoked. We just started walking up the island's path until we reached the stairs that lead up to the top to the monasteries. Now the stairs were just beyond cool. There were hundreds if not thousands of puffins. Guys, this is so cool. Just seeing the puffins right there, like, like amazingly cool. Not only that, the view is breathtaking. Like, oh. Jeez. We're right next to the stairs and on the island slopes. I, I mean, they were just so freaking cute. We reached the midway point at Christ Saddle and then kept hiking to the top. After climbing the island's 618 stairs, we finally made wow. it to the monastery. Now, the history of the island is just absolutely fascinating. The monastic settlement dates back to the 6th century where the monks of St. Fionan lived simple lives on this isolated island. They built these beehive huts wow. completely out of stone. They were precisely designed to make sure no water could get into them. Now, it's believed there were about 12 monks that lived here at a time. In the 13th century, the monks left the island for mainland Ireland and since then Skellig has became a place for pilgrimage. All in all the Skellig Islands were one of the coolest places I've ever been and I couldn't recommend them enough. Afterwards we're going to visit the most famous place in all Cliff Ireland, the Cliffs of Moher. Now located on Ireland's west coast, about a three hours drive from Dublin, the cliffs stretch over 14 kilometers with the highest reaching 214 meters wow. above the sea. When we reached them, I was just amazed by the size of the cliffs. I mean, they were way bigger than I imagined, and they just drop off straight into the ocean. If you want to walk to the end of the cliffs, you can make the trek to Hag's Head. If you can, I definitely recommend waiting for sunset as the light hits the cliffs, giving it a strikingly orange glow. I mean, it's easy to see why it's one of the most popular places in all Listen, of Ireland. that view, th when the sunset hits that cliff, oh my word, I'm like... Who take me, baby? Take me. I cannot believe. Guys, I'm I'm so I'm in awe of how beautiful this is. It's, 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 you keep hearing like, oh, it's always cold and, and cloudy and gloomy. But this is not it. This is not it. And I'm telling you, this is why. Ah, on my number number one. Number one on my bucket list. Number one. I have to visit. After, we're going to head over to Ireland's charming Dublin. capital of Dublin. Located on Easter Island's coast, Dublin is a city full of charm. Ooh. The capital is full of beautiful gardens and architecture. It has Shuck. such a friendly vibe to it. While you're there, you can walk across the River Liffey on the uniquely wow. designed Samuel Beckett Bridge, or you can walk over to the coast to experience the Irish Sea. I just love the feel and ambience of Dublin. It's such a magical capital. Now from Dublin, we're going to drive a few hours Northern up to Northern, Northern Ireland. Ireland. Now Northern Ireland is interesting because it's part of the UK. Back in 1921, Ireland was split into the North and Southern Ireland. One of my favorite places in Northern Ireland is Giant's Causeway. Giant's Causeway is one of the most recognizable places in all of Ireland. It's famous Ooh. for its jagged cliffs and over 40,000 basalt columns. They are these perfect hexagons that cover the coast. According to legend, 
The causeway was built by an Irish giant so he could cross the northern sea. When I was there, we started by hiking above the cliffs and then made our way down to the causeway. I was just amazed by the bizarre rock formations. I had such a fun time walking on them. It's wild to think they were made by nature. Now, while we're still in Northern Ireland, we're- Just, just looking at that, just, just looking at it. I'm telling you, I swear, it takes your breath away. It's like, it's like fairy tale. It doesn't look real, how beautiful, how, you know, the nature is. It's just like, it's, it doesn't look real. It looks so fake. I swear to you guys, it looks so fake. It's so beautiful. I cannot stress that anymore. Wow. We're going to head over to Karik Arid. It's this scenic bridge that crosses the sea over to this little island. I was just amazed by the water color there. I mean, it's just so blue, contrasted perfectly with the green cliffs. Now, just 20 minutes from there, you can visit the dark hedges. It's this avenue lined with over 90 beech trees. They were planted almost 250 years ago. Now according to legend, there's a ghost called the Grey Lady who wanders the road. Definitely has a spooky vibe, oh, wow. especially at night. After Northern Ireland, we're going to head over to England to visit Cornwall. Now located on England's southwestern tip, Cornwall is home to some of the best coastline in all of England. While the northern coast is full of impressive sea cliffs such as Godrevy Point, the southern coast... Ooh, look at that! See? I didn't know you guys have beaches. I swear to you, I just, it just sounds so far-fetched that you guys actually have beaches. It, 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 the greenery, the scenery is everything. It's crazy how when, you know, somebody lives somewhere and they take, the, it's as if they're so used to seeing it and they don't see the beauty or they take it for granted. The beauty and the, 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 the I don't even know how to express myself with just looking at this so in awe and beautiful this is. Wow. This is named the Cornish Riviera as it's full of scenic harbor towns and villages. Lou. One of my favorites is Lou. It's this picturesque oh. town that's divided by the Lou River which empties into the sea. There's an incredible beach full of classic wow. English houses. It very well could be a fairy tale. One of the most impressive locations in Cornwall is St. Michael's Mount. It's a tidal island with an impressive castle on top. It's believed to be the home of a monastery from the 8th to 11th Ooh. centuries, and the castle on the island summit dates back to the 12th Ooh. centuries and has been renovated throughout the ages. When the tide goes out, you can walk across the stone causeway to get there. I'm I think telling you, I know I'm pausing, but the way that it looks, the, your history is so rich. The buildings, that, you know, we don't have, not saying buildings are not here in the U.S., but not like this, not with such rich history, not with such, what you see, um, it, it, how should I explain it? It's just not, you don't have this caliber, uh, uh, um, a scene like, like fairy tale, you know what I mean? You don't have that here. The island summit dates back to the 12th centuries. 12th century. It has been renovated throughout the ages. When the tide goes out, you can walk across the stone causeway to get there. I think it's one of the coolest places in England. It reminds me a lot of Francis Mont Saint Michel, oh. which is also a tidal island with similar features. While we're still in southwestern England, we're going to head over to the Isles of Scilly. Located about 28 miles off of Cornwall, the Isles of Scilly are an archipelago made up of five inhabited islands with a population around 2,000 oh, people. The islands are God. full of crystal clear waters, historical sites, and rolling green hills. To reach the islands, you can take a three hour ferry from Penzance or you can take a short plane ride. The islands truly are stunning. I'd love to get a boat and just sail around the islands in the summertime. Afterwards, we're going to head. Oh my God! That is beautiful. That is so beautiful. I'm sorry, guys. Jeez, I can't stress this no more. This is beautiful. Jeez. Head back to the mainland of England to visit possibly the most iconic city in the world, London. Now, I've traveled to London several times, and I have to say it's one of my favorite cities. Everything from double-decker buses to the energy of Piccadilly Circus make this city feel so alive. You can check out the iconic Big Ben, Big ben 
and walk across the bridge to see the Palace of Westminster. There's the Tower Bridge, which is possibly the most famous bridge in all of London. You can also see the Stoic Guards at Buckingham Palace or take a ride on the London Eye. If you haven't already been to London, I highly recommend visiting when you can. It's hard to beat the London atmosphere. There's just no mm -mm. city like it in the world. After, we're gonna head back to the coast to visit the White Cliffs of Dover. Located about two hours drive from London, the White Cliffs of Dover are not only a beautiful scenic location, but also an intriguing historical site, especially regarding World War II history. Since the cliffs are Britain's closest point to continental Europe, being only 20 miles from France, during World War II, crossing from Dover was the primary route to Europe by boat or plane, so the White Cliffs were the first and last site of Britain for the troops. After the evacuation of Dunkirk, the site of the Cliffs of Dover was a sign of relief as the thousands of Allied troops made it safely back to Britain. I mean, the history of these cliffs is absolutely fascinating. Jeez. Now, while we're still on the topic of cliffs, we're going to visit the Seven Sisters. Now, located about the Seven Sisters coming up next. Guys, listen, let me explain it this way. Your scenery is amazing. The architecture, architect, architecture, architecture. <laughs> I'm baffling over my words, I'm, I'm, I'm tongue tired, is amazing, it's breathtaking, your beaches, the, the greenery, I, listen man, I don't know how, I wouldn't want to move from there. So when he showed London, yes, I'm interested in going to London, but not as much the countryside. Looking at all of these more on the countryside type, that's what I'm interested in. Not in the concrete jungle. I, that's not where I want to be. I want to experience all. Listen, man, I want to soak it all in. Ooh, ooh, boy. Sisters. Now located about two hours from Dover, the Seven Sisters are home to some of the most beautiful cliffs in wow. all of England. I love how there's just this perfectly green grass, then a straight drop off of the white cliffs to the beach below. The Seven Sisters has been used in film and television as a stand-in for the white cliffs of Dover. They look just like them, and I think honestly they're more scenic and less people and infrastructure there. Regardless, the Seven Sisters are an incredible coastline Jeez. and a perfect place to stroll along the English coast. Now afterwards, we're going to visit the city of Brighton. Now located about 40 minutes from the Seven Sisters, Brighton is a beautiful resort town with a massive beach that lines the English Channel. One of the most interesting features is the Brighton I 360. It's a tower that rises up wow. and offers an incredible view of Brighton. Another feature I really like about Brighton is its piers. Oh, wow. There's the remains of the West Pier that was built in 1866 but was sadly burnt down in 2003. And then there's the Brighton Palace Pier which was established this is pretty cool. I know he's talking about, well, this is pretty cool. Just coming out into water is like, this is a whole nother place by itself out in the water. It's beautiful. And it's, it's an attraction. Oh my word. Listen. In 1899, and has an amusement park amusement. at the end. Now, afterwards, we're gonna head over to the Jurassic Coast. While you won't find any dinosaurs here, you might find some fossils on the beach. One of the most famous spots on the Jurassic Coast is Dirtle Door. It's this limestone arch that goes straight into the ocean. There's a great beach there, and I can't think of a better place to spend on a warm summer day. One of my <gasps> favorite spots on the Jurassic Coast is mm -hmm. Old Harry's Rocks. I remember the first time I saw a picture of this place, and I was just baffled by the scenery. The Old Harry's Rocks are these sea stacks that are made completely out of chalk that mark the end of the Jurassic wow. Coast. In World War II, the stacks were used for target practice by pilots. Pretty wild. Now afterwards, we're going to visit the Isle of Wight. Located across the sea from Old Harry's Rocks, the Isle of Wight is the largest mm -hmm. island in all of England. You can reach the Isle of Wight by taking a ferry from Southampton or also by taking a hovercraft from Portsmouth. Now one of my favorite features of the Isle of Wight is the Nino's Lighthouse. It's this 19th century lighthouse that is built upon these chalk rocks that jet out of the Guys, sea. Guys, I know I keep repeating myself and I can't contain myself. <laughs> I'm ready to pack up and come. I'm ready, ready, ready like Freddy. This is amazing. I don't know if you guys understand how beautiful and amazing you guys have it. Because this, listen, and you, it, it seems like you can, you, to me, I can smell the fresh air. It's, it's just, it's just so how I feel. I can't wait to visit. 
It's such a unique location and I just love the Ooh. white sea cliffs. Afterwards, we're gonna visit the Lake District. Located in northwestern England, the Lake District is known for its glacial ribbon lakes and its fell mountains. It's home to oh, Scuffell wow. Pike, which is the highest place in all England with an elevation of 3,209 feet. The area is just absolutely beautiful. I think one of the best things you can do in the Lake District is just drive on the roads that wind through the mountains. One notable wow. road is the Honister Pass. If you keep driving down the pass, you'll reach Buttermere Lake. It's surrounded by massive mountains and it's just incredible overall scenery. I mean, I couldn't recommend the Lake District enough. Nails. Easily one of the most beautiful places in all of England. After the Lake District, we're gonna head over to the country of Wales. Located in the southwest part of mm. Great Britain, Wales is famous for its mountainous national parks, picturesque coastline, Ooh. and distinct Welsh language. One of the most scenic places in Wales is the Snowdonia National Park. It's a region in Northwest Wales that is known for its mountains and lakes. The highest peak in Wales is Mount Snowdon, which is located in the park with an elevation of 1,085 meters. You can hike to the top or also take the Snowdon Mountain Railway. One of my favorite lakes oh, in Snowdonia geez. is Lynn Padarn. It's located on the base of Mount Snowdon. It's just such a serene area. Now, if you want to explore some of Wales' coastline, the Lynn Peninsula offers some scenic locations. I really like the area around the Iravale Mountain. It's a beautiful coast coupled with green farmland and has a backdrop of impressive peaks. Afterwards, we're gonna head up to Scotland to visit Edinburgh. If you wanna go back in time, Edinburgh is a must. When I started traveling, this was one of the first cities I ever visited. It's a medieval old town with intricate neoclassical buildings and cobblestone streets. The iconic Edinburgh Castle overlooks the city. It's one of the oldest fortified places in all of Europe. Now, while we're still in Edinburgh, we're gonna head over to Arthur's Seat. Arthur's Seat is located on Holyrood Park, Jeez. and it's a short walk from Edinburgh Center. Arthur's Seat is an extinct volcano with an elevation of 823 feet. When I was there, I wanted to get as high as I could so I could see all Edinburgh. I made the hike up and reached the top. It was so windy up there, I just couldn't believe it. After I hiked to the top, I just wow. had a good time hiking around Hollyrod Park and enjoying the views of one of the British Isles' most iconic cities. Another stunning nearby place in Scotland is Denotar Castle. It's located about two hours drive wow. from Edinburgh. This medieval fortress is full of history. It's where the Scottish crown jewels were hidden during the 17th century. To date, only the ruins tell the castle's past. The cliffs that surround the fortress make it so dramatic. Now, just an hour north from the Notre Castle is the Rattray Head Lighthouse. It's an amazing beach area with a 112 feet tall lighthouse just off the coast and was built in 1895. If you keep driving up the coast, you'll reach wow. the Duncansby Stacks. It's located at the most northeastern part of the British mainland. It's about a six hour drive from Edinburgh, so quite the road trip, but it's definitely worth it. It's home to some of the most beautiful sea stacks in all the British Isles. After the sea stacks, we're gonna head over to Glencoe. Located in the Scottish Highlands, Glencoe is home Jeez. to some of Scotland's most beautiful scenery and mountains. I found this place by accident as I was driving around the Highlands. It's been the filming location for many oh. popular movies such as Braveheart. My favorite part of Glencoe is its mountains. I mean, I couldn't believe how huge they were. I felt like I was in Switzerland or Norway. I recommend just taking a drive on the A82 road and you can just see all the wonders Glencoe has to offer. It has one of my favorite mountains in the area. I won't even try to pronounce that. It has an almost perfect pyramid shape and you get a great view of it from Ooh. the road. Now after it, we're gonna head over to one of Scotland's most Ooh. iconic locations. Ooh. I love how green it is. I, I, I just can't get over that. The green, the scenery, the, 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 a sense of peace and 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 serenity man just just looking at it just oh man and there's something that i also notice with your roads they're wide they're clean they're you know it's it's for everybody it's not it's not too overcrowded listen it's just it's this seems so family oriented Everything that's listen, I can't get enough of this video. I'm sorry, I want to be there now. Not even sorry, I want to be there now. I, I wow, the Glenfinan Viaduct, located oh, at the geez. top of Loch Shiel in the West Highlands of Scotland. This may look familiar because it was featured in the Harry Potter.
channel where I make Jeez. look at that Jeez. listen like I said I don't know hi Bambi you woke up come here I don't know how he, 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 hi, go back to sleep. How can you not love this place? How can you not love the sceneries, everything? It's beautiful. It's amazing. It's breathtaking. And like I said, normally when you have some places, when you live in a certain place, you take it for granted because you're like, oh, you're used to seeing it, so me going on and on and in awe and amazed and you know with how the place looks and and to me it's everything it's just everything nom 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 milk 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 <laughs> so guys i hope you guys enjoy this one don't forget to go in the comment section tell me what you'd like me to react to next because it will be done wow I want to visit all of these places, every one on the list. I know it's going to take some time, but I'm more than happy to take it all in. Like I said, I'm more for the countryside, not the city itself, but the countryside. So, you know, the local, mix with the locals and enjoy the scenery because they know, listen, I tell you, listen, they go here, go there. You know what I mean? that's the experience I want and that's and that's what I am going for and that's what I am going to do I can go on and on and on and on and on like I said amazing 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 view and places in the British Isle I'm sorry it's breathtaking and listen to me I will give this up in the heartbeat to live somewhere like that to can visit each and every day. It just give me this sense of peace and happiness. Period. I hope you guys enjoy. I love you guys. Don't forget to hit the like button. Hit the share button. Tell me in the comment section what you'd like me to react to next. Because it will be done. It's an island girl and I'm running out of here. I can't believe. I'm so excited watching the video. I can you imagine the excitement when I get there. <laughs> love you guys and I'll definitely, definitely. Catch you guys in another video. Bye. Drinking milk?